In Florida, the death toll continues to rise from Hurricane Ian, now up to 129 people killed. Many people who survived the devastation are struggling to clean up. Officials say more than $207 million in claims have already been paid out by insurance companies. But statewide, the damage is estimated at more than $100 billion. As Manuel Bayorquez reports, it appears much of that loss may not be covered. As residents return to Hurricane Ian's ground zero, cleaning up is only the start of what will be a years long recovery effort. Jesus. A few days after the storm hit, we met Robbie Podgarski in Fort Myers. He had lost mostly everything. So that's our house. His home, his business, all destroyed from flooding. We uh, never in our wildest dreams could we have thought this was an outcome that was possible. We checked back in with Podgarski yesterday to see how things were going. So for insurance, we already talked to our agents and they basically said nothing's covered. Unless I can prove to them that wind destroyed it before water touched it, there's nothing that I could do. But Garski doesn't have federal flood insurance. In fact, only about 18 percent of Florida households do. And homeowners insurance stopped covering flooding in the 1960s. Despite living in a zone where federal flood insurance is recommended, but Garski told us it was too expensive. Since we're in a historic building in technically a FEMA flood zone, our insurance would be more than our, our mortgage or our rent. Homeowners in Florida already pay the highest premiums, nearly three times the national average for property insurance. And state Senator Jeff Brandis says it's only going to get worse. After Ian, you're going to see 30 percent rate increases, uh, largely 20 to 30 percent rate increases throughout the state of Florida. Brandis says a major problem is that despite only 8% of homeowners insurance claims coming from Florida nationally, a whopping 80% of claim related lawsuits are filed there. That drives insurers out. In the long term, the legislature will ultimately have to fix this. Property insurance really has become the Achilles heel of the Florida real estate market. Manuel Bojorquez, CBS News. Meanwhile, today, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida shared updates on the Sanibel Causeway repairs and further recovery after it's after Hurricane Ian, saying temporary repairs will allow a one time convoy of power restoration equipment, along with supplies and crews just to access Sanibel Island and continue restoration efforts there. The temporary Sanibel Causeway repairs that have already been undertaken uh, will allow this massive convoy that you see out there, 200 bucket trucks, 150 line and pickup trucks towing 50 trailers, two tractor trailers, other first responders, they are actually going to be able to cross Sanibel Causeway and drive onto the island today. And that one bridge connecting the island to the mainland had been destroyed in the hurricane, but residents should be able to access the island uh, somewhat permanently by October 21st once the crews and the Department of Transportation completes those repairs. Giving money to a homeless person on the street can be uh, an uncomfortable encounter, but there is an app you can download to your phone that can change that. Eight places in the country are using the app Samaritan hoping it'll encourage giving and changing lives. The creators are in Louisville right now, looking for 100 of the city's homeless to sign up. They display their picture, their story, the amount of money they need and why. Uh, next, trying to get a thousand potential donors to sign up. So far, most requests are, are pretty modest. They're looking for $26 for bus fare. $30 for a housing application fee. The developers say just a little bit can go a long way. People have come back to us and said that uh, Samaritan has played a life changing part in their journey out of homelessness. So maybe we've shortened their time on the streets from, you know, 12 months to six months or three months to one month. It's kind of like a GoFundMe. Case managers monitor the spending, which helps with donor confidence. So far, nationally, over a thousand homeless people have participated in this app. Still ahead, a new survey shows sitting down with family and friends for a regular meal could have a big impact on mental health and well-being.